Uh, thank you very much, Nicola, for your nice and kind presentation. Uh, thank you all for being here today um, and to share my research. Um, it's entitled Doing Philosophy in Colonial Chile, Authors, Works and Manuscripts from the 17th to the 19th century. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I would like to begin by geographically locating the scenario that I will present today. With regard to this, it's very important to consider the distance between Lima, the, cap the capital of the Viceroyalty of Peru, and Santiago de Chile, here, oh, sorry, um, which is the city where the handwritten documentation that we will review originated. The distance of 3,000 kilometers was difficult to cover in the 18th century. We must consider both the Andes mountain and uh, the Atacama desert. The arrival of books was very much conditioned, but, San, uh, but by Santiago being such a, a remote location. I would like to add to this point some general background. Oh, thank you. Lima uh, on the right uh, side, Lima is in the north and Santiago is in the south. <coughs> um, so I, I would like to add to this point some general background. Uh, it was not until 1810 that the printing press system came to Chile. Yesterday. <laughs> uh, in fact, two years later, the first journal, the Aurora de Chile, appears in 1812. Due to the lack of books, the philosophical lessons given in educational institutions were recorded in the form of manuscripts. Unfortunately, there are no studies on this particular area. This means that there is a gap in the recorded history of philosophy in Chile. This is the reason why the recovery and study of philosophical manuscripts is so important. It's in this context that the Ex Umbre in Solem sorry, project arose, the progress of which I will now share. Uh, later I will show you our blog where you can check all the material that you can see today. Returning to the manuscripts, <clears throat> it's important to indicate that in many of them, in the manuscript, we find the explanation of the philosophical doctrines many times through the verbatim copy of passages from printed books. For example, in this slide, we see the copy that the Italian Jesuit Nicolao Contucci took to Chile. This manuscript records the Aristotelica Peripatetica Philosophia taught by the teacher Domenico Durano at the Roman College from 1711 to 1714. <coughs> but what happened before 1810 in, in terms of philosophy? Regarding to the Regarding the record of philosophical activity, I would like to recall that the first two American universities were both founded in the same year, in 1551, the Real y Pontificia Universidad de México and the Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos in Peru. As far as Chile is concerned, the first university was founded in the 17th century, indeed, the Universidad Pontificia de Santo Tomás de Aquino was founded in 1622 by the Dominican Order. Three years later, the Jesuit Colegio Máximo San Miguel, or Universidad Pontificia, Colegio Máximo de San Miguel, was founded. Five decades later, in 1681, the Colegio San Diego de Alcalá, 
was founded by the Franciscan order, and already in the 18th century, the Real Universidad de San Felipe, and later in 1778, the Real Convictorio Carolino. Fortunately, we have philosophical documentations from several of these educational institu institutions, for we preserve philosophical manuscript from at least four educational institutions in which the discipline was taught during the colonial era. The process of recovering manuscripts. <clears throat> I, I would like to show some of these documents since they are useful for studying the development of philosophy, of philosophy in South America. The starting point of our research was the different catalogues of philosophical manuscripts. On the one hand, we use the general work of Walter Redmond from 1972, which refers to primary and secondary sources preserved throughout uh, Latin America. And, on the other hand, we use the catalogues that refer exclusively, exclusively to Chilean words and archives. Among the latter, we use the catalogues of Jesuit scholars Ismael Quiles from 1953, Walter Hanich from 1963, and Fernando Astorquiza from 1982. <clears throat> the next step was to carry out archival research to verify the current existence of the manuscripts. We did it in Archivo Nacional Histórico, Archivo Histórico Mercedario, Archivo de la Compañía de Jesús, Biblioteca Nacional de Chile, and Archivo Central Andrés Bello. Uh, in this image, you can see the oldest manuscript and testimony, the philosophical commentaries of the Chilean Franciscan Juan Fuica. The study of this text allows us to document the teaching of a Scottish philosophy, a philosophy at Colegio San Diego del Cala in Santiago de Chile. The volume records a three-year course from 1687 to 1689 and includes five commentaries on Aristotelian works according to the teachings of Duns Scotus. The Scottish philosophical current had prominent followers in South America. In fact, a copy of the course taught by Elias del Carmen Pereira in Córdoba, Argentina, is currently preserved in the Franciscan archive of Santiago de Chile, which is what you see now in the image. Pereira introduced philosophical eclecticism in, in Argentina and had some Chilean students, among them the brothers Francisco and Genaro Martinez de Aldunate. One of them probably took this manuscript to Chile. However, I would like to emphasize here that Pereira ha also had another character as a student who was to become very relevant in the history of philosophy in Chile, Manuel Antonio Talavera. I will refer to him in greater detail a little later. The important thing is that this fact allows us to document, in part, the circulation of philosophical knowledge in South America during the last quarter of the 18th century. Um, that is from Cordoba in Argentina uh, through the Andes and to <coughs> Santiago de Chile. <clears throat> Another impor important achievement that we have reached with this research is the documentation of philosophical teachings during the 18th century in the Colegio Maximo San Miguel of the Society of Jesus. <clears throat> in this slide, you can see um, a brief timeline in which we have highlighted a few of the Colegio Maximo professors from the beginning of the century 
up and up to 1764, that is until a little before the expulsion of the company. I will show some of the works that we have been able to completely digitalize and they are available on our blog. And I will briefly comment on some important aspects about a few of the authors. <clears throat> I have um, put, put both the above the title and year of the works, as well as their location in the archive on the slide. It is also relevant to us that most of these works are still unpublished. <clears throat> this first manuscript from Colegio Maximo San Miguel <clears throat> records the teachings of Manuel Ovalle in the college between 1705 and 1707, and includes sections on logic, physics, and metaphysics. Um, is preserved in Archivo Nacional Histórico Fondo Barrio, Fondo Antiguo, Ancient or Old Depository, uh, Volume 78. Uh, by the way, Manuel, uh, sorry, Manuel. Uh, was the nephew of the famous Jesuit historian uh, and chronicler Alonso de Ovalle from the uh, 17th century. <clears throat> In this slide, we see the manuscript of the Chilean Jesuit Juan Puga. From him, we get the uh, disputations on the soul, the anima, and also the eight books of uh, Aristotle's physics. There are also some anonymous works, of which we have not yet been able to identify their author. What we know is that the one we see in this image by a Jesuit author and includes disputes over different works by, by Aristotle. In this case, uh, on the Metaphysica, uh, the Anima and the Generation and Corruption from 1750. <clears throat> this is the manuscript and testimony of the teachers by the Chilean Jesuit Agustin Narvarte in the Colegio Maximo uh, during the year 1722. <clears throat> this work includes disputes about all metaphysica universum, metaphysica, and metaphysics. Um, and, sorry, and also uh, the anima uh, on the soul of Aristotle also. It's preserved in um, the Sala Medina in the National uh, Library. <clears throat> Another teacher whose manuscripts are preserved is the Spanish Jesuit Juan Soro Zaval. In fact, his uh, disputations to Aristotelian physics are preserved in the um, Archivo Nacional Histórico. It's, it is worth mentioning that we have identified his authorship of a prior anonymous volume, which is the manuscript you can see in this image. Um, um, 77 is a copy from 89. <clears throat> in this slide, you can see part of the manuscripts of the Chilean Jesuit Miguel Ureta. In our archives, we have his disputation on physics, metaphysics, and on the soul, the anima, by Aristotle, in two, vol in, in two volumes, 90 and 91. It should be known that this is one of the most extensive testimonies. It is uh, carefully crafted and include detailed decorations. Another teacher was the Spanish, Lorenzo Romo. This Jesuit had an important administrative career in the Society of Jesus in Chile. At the time of the expulsion, in 1767, he was sick in the Colegio Maximo, but he refused to stay. He died 
during the trip home on the high seas. Two of his manuscript curves are preserved, which give testimony to his teaching activity. Logics kept in the Jesuit archive and Physica Contratomistas in the historical archive of La Merced. And the last Colegio Maximo professor of whom we have testimony of his philosophical teachings is the Spanish priest Agustin Sajosa. As a result of his teaching work at the Jesuit institution in Santiago, a volume is preserved in the historical archive of La Merced that contains two works that expose and comment on the doctrine of Aristotle, physics on, on the left and metaphysics on the right of the image. <clears throat> a point to note is that this these last two professors, Agustin Sarajosa and Lorenzo Romo, were expelled along with the company in 1767. Here you can see the list of religious personnel who were in the Colegio Maximo on August the 27th of that year. This document corresponds to the report on the assets of the Society of Jesus in Chile on the day of the expulsion. I would like to highlight that with this type of administrative documentation can help complement research and documentation with regard to philosophy professor. So, with number uh, 20 is Agustin Sajosa, uh, and with number 19 is Manuel Lacunza who will do very prolific work as a chronicler for the Society of Jesus in, ex in exile. Uh, in fact, he died in Imola, in Italy, in 1801. <clears throat> the list also includes the details of the Colegio Maximo San Miguel students, as you can say, escolares here. <clears throat> Mm. On the left of, of this image, uh, with the number 39, we find Juan Ignacio Molina, also known as Abate Molina, who was a prominent, prominent naturalist, geographer, and chronicler of the Jesuit order. And on the right side, with the number 84, we, you can see the name of Lorenzo Romo. Who, who was in the Colegio Maximo Infirmary on the eve of, of expulsion. As I said before, we have tried to enrich our research of the development of philosophy in, with other types of handwritten documents, other than the philosophical manuscripts. In this image, you can see the inventory of books in the Colegio Maximo library on the day the company was expelled from the American territories. This document indicates that 45 boxes with books were found. Unfortunately, the information provided is minimal, since it only indicates the title and number of copies of each book in the library, as you can see here. Just the name and the number of copies. However, the list is equally valuable as it allows us to form an idea of the philosophical material available for study in this period. <clears throat> Another important point is um, from the late 18th century, a couple of manuscripts have survived that can document the philosophical teachings at the Real Convictorio Carolino, RCC, Real Convictorio Carolino. In this slide, you can see the ethics of Manuel Antonio Talavera. He is a very important author of, for the development of philosophy in Chile. Talavera was a Paraguayan who received a doctorate in theology from the University of Córdoba in Argentina. According to documentation we handled, 
he was probably a student of Elias del Carmen Pereira, to whom we have referred before. Talavera introduced philosophical eclecticism in Chile. In this slide, we can see his Instituciones Physicae, in which he proposed a syncretism between scholasticism and the new science. In these works, the doctrines of natural philosophy are combined with new empirical data as well as with the authority of the Holy Scriptures. Through, through it, its study, one can see how aspects of both modernity and scholasticism coexisted in the teachings of the discipline in the latter part of the colonial era. <clears throat> in this slide, we can see a sample of the scientific philosophical sources used by Talavera. <clears throat> in addition, uh, you can see the main European authors quoted in the manuscripts, who are mainly French, uh, the Journal de Trevaux, Le Dictionnaire, Le Bédisson, Millet de Charles, Tournefort, Pourchot, Joseph Bala. Uh, there are other German, like Mayr, Hauser, um, Italian, Sanchi, uh, Fortunato de Brescia, and uh, Spanish, like uh, Tomás Vicente Tosca, Benito Jerónimo Feijó. Uh, and in this other slide, you can see some of the study topics in the Instituciones Physicae, together with the authors on which Talavera bases his explanations. Uh, for example, about fire, um, he quotes Nolet. Uh, on the earthquakes, he quotes Kircher. Uh, he study on oral vacui, fossils, electric force, celestial bodies, for, for, for example. I mention this here because perhaps one of them may be of interest to you. This European authors who were um, known in, in Latin America at that time. In short, Manuel Antonio Talavera, like most of the professors of the late 18th century, is a type of intellectual who is faithful to the cardinal principles of the philosophy of the church and, through eclecticism, welcome and taught as much of modernity as was compatible with the dogmas of Catholicism. To illustrate this, I would like to show a short passage from the epilogue on the Instituciones Physicae. Is, is this passage. He wrote, However, I beg you, I earnestly ask you, dear uh, disciple, uh, disciple, that uh, with the Christian um, charity of your heart, you have recognized all the errors of my ignorance and lightness, and I submit all this to be correct by the censorship of the Holy Roman Church. But use the things that I have written, said, proven, or demonstrated in the true philosophy, so that they are delivered to you, defend these things with all your strength from the slanderers, like the most perfect lovers of the truth. And for all this, we give infinite thanks to God. This is, and, and here the, the, and the, the manuscripts. Another Real Con Victorio Carolina professor was the priest Jose Francisco Chauren, the Chilean priest, from whom we preserve the Filosofia Eclectica. It records his triennial philosophical course between 1796 and 1798. Chauren was a chancellor of the Real Con Victorio Carolino and will later play an important role in the formation of the Instituto Nacional, the predecessor institution of the current Universidad de Chile. <clears throat> uh, 
Another interesting point is the Real Universidad de San Felipe. Real Universidad de San Felipe. Um, another interesting document is the testimony of the teaching by the Augustinian José Lazarte at the Real, Real Universidad de San Felipe in 1807. This text is entitled Acerta ex Universa Filosofía and actually shows a different teaching methodology. So, it is no longer about long commentaries or disputes about Aristotelian works. Instead, instead we find the statements of several theses that have to be defended orally. In this slide, we can see how the different propositions are organized into sections of logic, physics, metaphysics, and ethics, which the student had to, had to explain orally facing an academic tribunal. Finally, I would like to refer briefly to some issues that occur at the end of the 18th century and that are related to the censorship of certain philosophical books by the Inquisition. In this slide, you can see the account of the persecution and conviction process carried out against Manuel de Salas. The titles of the censor work are those that appear below on the green arrow. Um, <clears throat> it was art that because they contain ideas that were enlightened or not strictly related to Catholicism, they were confiscated by the Inquisition. La philosophie du bon sens, for example. Um, and, and this other one uh, slide are the details of the book that Salas, um, you can see some of the titles of the remaining works that were not confiscated by the Inquisition. And here is the list, the details of the books that Salas sold to the state of Chile in 1832 and that with the passing of time gave rise to the collection of the National Library of Chile. <clears throat> and to end this presentation, I would like to offer a few final remarks. First, it is important to note that we have documented much of the 18th century philosophical teachings in the Colegio Maximo San Miguel up until the time just before the expulsion of the Society of Jesus from the American territories. With this documentation, we have recovered both entire work, that is three-year course, as well as partial texts. We have also identified authorship of works that remain anonymous. Secondly, we have recovered and valued a small part of, philosophical, uh, of Chile's philosophical, historical, and educational heritage. Parts of this manuscript recovery work is available on our blog and or our YouTube channel. If you can uh, um, click here, you can you can see it. Uh, here you can find all the the books available for download downloading. Um, there are much more than I took before. Ah. Ah, sorry, I need that. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, in this vlog we have our the, the completely work to review and, and download of, of the all the uh, Colegio Maximo San Miguel professors and we have much more material for for checking out and ooh, 
Well, if you um, click on your channel, you can find also our audiovisual capsules that um, we, uh, show the, the, all the archival research on, on, the, on, the, on the archives and on the public libraries. Um, so, <clears throat> however, there are still many aspects that could be deepened. In this sense, new lines of research could be opened from here, among which I could mention philosophy, as I have tried to show here, history, education, heritage studies, etc. In this sense, I would like to point out the attractiveness of studying the document stored in the old depositories and ancient founds of libraries and archives throughout uh, Latin America. So one might deepen the value of this work from different perspectives. For example, as I have tried to show, one might trace the circulation of knowledge or value them as historical, philosophical testimonies of colonial Latin America and also from its aesthetic value as a material object. As you can see in this image, after just over three centuries, the current material conditions of many of these volumes make it urgent to recover these manuscripts' works, as you can see. And in terms of its aesthetic value, it must be considered that both the binding of the volumes the paper, the ink, were made in an artisanal way that is uh, made by hand. And this is all many things for your attention.